Phobia was such a unique experience for me, because on the face of it, the game visually looks like practically every other smaller budget indie horror game, even down to the shamelessly unsubtle parallels to Resident Evil. So fucking hell was I surprised when it turned out to be one of the best horror games I have played in a long time. <laughs> Phobia instantly set itself apart from all the other horror game crap by showcasing its own distinct visual style. Doing a lot with a little is the name of the game when it comes to the various locales you'll explore through Phobia's not so short but still sweet 8 hour odd runtime. All the environments are suitably cluttered, but despite the need to search thoroughly through every desk drawer for even a shred of a useful item, they never become a chore to search through. Mainly because the devs did a fantastic job at organising the rooms in such a way that every important key item is obviously placed without it being too on the nose. Most of Phobia's story takes place in the Dymphna Hotel, which on paper stands in for Resi 1's Spencer Mansion. I enjoy a good reference as much as the next survival horror fan, but even so, I was initially concerned that Phobia would quickly devolve into a copy-paste rip-off of much better games from the genre. Outside of this lobby though, with its grand, definitely not inspired by anything you've ever seen before, staircase, there's not much flagrant pastiching to be found. Instead, we get to see the rarely taken smart approach, rather than copying visuals, or even just lifting moments wholesale, the tone and atmosphere of the early Resident Evil projects serve as the stimulus for Phobia's horrific creativity. It's not just Resi that gets a look in either. Shades of Outlast and Silent Hill, as well as a touch of The Walking Dead for good measure, all seem to influence the approach the game takes towards instilling fear. Honestly, at times, I think it's a better Alone in the Dark remake than the Alone in the Dark remake. Like many games in the same field, there are plenty of areas that let the overall experience down. And while I understand that that could be due to budget constraints rather than poor craftsmanship, knowing that doesn't make the combat suck any less. However, Phobia survives its own sucky combat because it firmly captures what makes games like Silent Hill and Resident Evil so brilliant. The progression. Unlocking doors and solving puzzles feels so satisfying because you know every time you do it, you're one step closer to your goal. And that is where the horror perfectly rears its ugly head. Yes, each step is a step closer to freedom, but it's also a step closer to a spooky ghost or gnarly ghoul ready to tear your face off for fun. Phobia is the first time in a very long time that I've played an indie horror that actually captures the spirit of survival horror classics, instead of just insulting them with half assed mechanics and scares. Phobia knows its strengths, and it plays to them. When it does display its weaknesses, it's smart enough to still keep the resource management as the crux that holds the more action-orientated sections together. It doesn't matter that the gunplay just boils down to waiting for the right specific moment to shoot a weak point, or in the case of bosses, unloading whatever you've got and hoping it's enough, because the stress doesn't come from the actual encounter, it comes from worrying if you've got enough ammo left to clear it, which again is a huge part of the reason that searching every highly detailed nook and cranny never gets old. You cannot afford to let it get old. The constant tiny dopamine hits you get finding bits and pieces of pistol bullets in a random side drawer make exploring every inch of every room feel not just necessary, but kind of fun, Tim. There's a load of small touches like that that keep the gameplay feeling modern without changing up the established formula. Things like not being able to see a map on a pause menu, instead of needing to use one of the floor plan maps scattered around the hotel, give a fresh perspective on the old school tropes of the genre. It's also helped by spot on eerie sound design. You can never really tell if the sound is coming from yourself, the old hotel building settling, or something much worse. On the topic of worse, one of the only significant issues I have with the game is that, like a lot of survival horrors, some of the puzzles can get a little bit I'm sorry, how the fuck was I supposed to know what you cunting dickheads wanted me to do? Like, what the fuck do you think you're playing at, you fuckers? Kind of frustrating. The most egregious examples are reserved for the bonus hidden secrets, 
But, like, guys, come on. Just because it's an obtuse pain in the arse to figure out doesn't make it a good puzzle. You also spend more time in elevators than a Mass Effect game, but it gives me the chance to reload all my guns, so I'll get over that one. Now and then. Thank you all for your loyalty and support. Rarely do I find a survival horror game that can mimic the genre classics and actually understand what makes those games masterpieces. It's not some half-assed isometric camera angles or straight ripping off sound design that made survival horror what it is today. It was intelligent level design and a priority on letting progression lead the anxiety instead of loud noises and hordes of generic monsters. <laughs> Also helps if your puzzles are well thought out and can't be solved by a three-year-old. Phobia is the closest one of these indie games has come to recapturing that old-school resi style, and if you want that feeling as much as I do, I'd check it out right now. If you've already played it, we'd love to hear what you thought of it. Was it a modern classic that sits beside the genre's definitive superstars? Or some dumbass puzzle-filled crap that should disappear back up its own unoriginal arsehole? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you're feeling extra generous, we love and appreciate any and all the likes we get. Also, for those in the position to do so, we have a Patreon that helps support future content. We don't lock off any content there, but any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching this video, and cheers.